Welcome to this week's episode of Coffee with a Journalist, brought to you by One Pitch. Are you curious how One Pitch can help you find relevant journalists to pitch, including some of the guests on this podcast? Head to our website at onepitch.co to learn more. This week on Coffee with a Journalist, we sit down with Anna Rushka from Banking Dive. As a senior reporter, Anna covers banking in the fintech sector. She was also part of the team at Industry Dive to help launch the Banking Dive vertical. During the episode, Anna talks about her interest in banks and fintech partnerships, looking for second day stories that further outline major stories, doing introductory calls with sources or meeting up for coffee, and more. Let's hear from Anna now. Welcome, everyone. This is Coffee with a Journalist. I'm Beck Bamberger. Hopefully, you're a publicist wanting to know all the great juicy insights from journalists. That's why we're here. Today with us is senior reporter from Banking Dive, Anna Rushka, and coming from D.C., my little field trip, as I just mentioned, Anna, for my program that I was last in. I love D.C. It's a great spot. (laughs) It is a great spot, but also Banking Dive happens to be headquartered there, so that makes sense as well. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> Excellent. So for those who are not familiar, and I do like to ask this of everyone, just to make sure everyone's on the same understanding of what the outlet generally covers before talking about what you specifically cover, how would you encompass the coverage of Banking Dive? Yeah. So we're an online publication. I actually helped launch this publication about four years ago. We're part of Industry uh-huh. Dive, which has about 30 yes. different industry publications. So we cover the banking and fintech sector. And so that, I mean, that can be everything from focusing on bank technology, regulation, mergers, financial policy, banking trends. We've got a daily newsletter that goes out covering banking news. And then we have a weekly newsletter that covers more, dives more into the the fintech space. And that goes out on on just Wednesday afternoons. Mm -hmm. I'm scanning a couple of your articles here again. You're covering, it looks like everything from federal regulation down to payments Wells Fargo is making to, you know, WhatsApp probes and so forth. So what's the coverage you're looking to do? Yeah. So we're a small team. So that means <laughs> we could be covering yeah. anything. You know, we don't really, we don't necessarily have, we're not siloed into different beats in most cases. I could be covering all, you know, what you said, what you what you just outlined was just a really good example of just how widespread my coverage could be. But that said, I mean, we've got particular interests that we try to cover. You know, I'm I'm really interested in how banks and fintechs are partnering together. I've covered just the the really interesting cannabis banking space and just legislation that is sort of, you know, stalemate right now in terms of encouraging more mm-hmm. banks to, to kind of serve that space. And then I, I really like covering just how big tech and even just retail giants like Walmart are kind of making moves to offer banking services and, and payment services to, to their yes. customers. It's, it's an interesting trend. And I, I'm particularly really like covering that. Yes. By the way, why do you think that's happening? You know, it's it's just another way, I think, for them to just increase that stickiness with their customers. You know, if you get mm-hmm. if you can get into folks' wallets in that sense and, and have them start to open accounts and deposits at your corporation, it's just another way to 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 serve their customer segment. Excellent. Hmm. And true, true indeed. Yeah, because if you're having people spend money with you. And then they're also banking money with you. And you could see that makes me a little nervous of like, well, then all the insight that they might be able to have from your finance. And anyway, possible problems. But anyway, (laughs) how's your inbox? It is full. (laughs) Okay. What do you do to manage it? If anything, yeah, I, you know, I get, I get so many pitches a day, but in, you know, in combination, I get just a ton of Google alerts and notices coming out from various regulators. So there's, it, it's a lot, it's a lot to filter through and sort through. So I, I try to like, you know, I'll sign in in the morning, I'll go through it and I'll just kind of flag 
any email that is like, okay, got to come back to that. Oh, that that's something I, I need to look into later. You know, if it's not something I need to immediately open, because in the mornings, I'm, I tend to just be really busy writing. So I, I don't want to get oh, too distracted. Writer. Okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> don't want to get too distracted with my inbox mm-hmm. in the mornings. But I just, I have a system where I just, I'll flag like a ton of emails. And then later in the morning, when I've got some more time, when I've filed my first story, I'll go back and kind of go through those emails that that stood out to me. Hmm. Okay, so you're a flagger. Yes. It sounds like. <laughs> ah, there is a there is a breed of that in this journalistic population here. Okay. And so do you just delete then pitches where you just deem not a fit from the subject line alone? Yes. I yeah. yeah, I I feel like just being in the space as long as I have now, I've I'm I've a pretty good yeah, you've been you know mm-hmm. I'm pretty good at filtering out something that I just know is not going to be a good fit right away, and I and I just don't have time to read everything. So yeah, I will I will click that delete button pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then, what's a good pitch to you if it gets the flag? Why is it getting the flag? A good pitch. So. The banking industry, there's there's just a lot of fast moving pieces. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of news that we that we cover, like breaking news or just really timely stories that that we need to get out and, and and cover. But you know, I'm always looking for those those second day stories too that kind of further the news. So if there was like a big piece of regulation that a regulator you know released or a, a merger that was announced or just as i said a really interesting non-bank deciding they want to launch some sort of banking service i may cover that just right away you know put it in our newsletter as fast as we can but i'm always looking for a pitch that that furthers that so timely is is really the key word here give me a source that a relevant source obviously but someone who can speak to why elon musk wants to you know add banking and payments to to X, as it's called now. What does this new piece of regulation mean for for CEOs, bank CEOs? So I, I want to see a headline that really just is aware of the news and is pitching me someone who can really add some some really interesting analysis or insight to that. Okay. And by the way, since you live in DC and you do cover a lot of regulation, do you meet with people in Congress? Do you have coffees? Do you walk down to Capitol Hill? Yeah, I you know I. I'm a remote worker, but we've got our, you know, our office in DC and I try to go in once a week. And then I usually try to time that with, you know, an an interesting event that might be going on, you know, a press conference or maybe there's a big fintech conference being hosted. So I try to get out and be in the city during occasions like that. And, you know, if you have a client that is attending a particular conference I might be at or is already just based in DC, that's like a good time for me to just, you know, step away from the conference or from the office in DC and and, and grab a coffee. I'm open, definitely open to, to meetings like that. Hmm. Okay. Speaking of, as you said, open to meetings like that, relationship building, how does one go about building a relationship with you? Yeah. So yeah, meeting for coffee in person meetings, I think are, are great. Obviously, I don't have time to meet with everyone that might pitch, you know, a coffee meeting that just would would be really hard for my schedule. You know, I've, I've got stories to write, I've got calls to make. But you know, if, if, if I feel like your source is someone that is going to be a great person to keep in touch with and, and valuable to our publication, you know, have some great insight down the road, I'll, you know, I'll make that effort to, to grab coffee. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I, I appreciate just introductory calls too. you know, if you're, if your hmm. client is not in DC or won't be in DC anytime soon, and maybe there's no news to share, but maybe you, you want to get them on my radar and, and maybe the company is doing something that I've been following, or maybe you've got a new, new leadership, a new CEO. I mean, that's, that's always a great opportunity to just kind of do an introductory call. It might not turn into a story. It might, it might even be off the record, but you know, I, I, I've found that in most cases, those, those calls can be beneficial. I can get a little bit of context on the company or the person and, and revert back to that. You know, if I have a story that, that is relevant to that person. Okay. She likes to go to coffee. Very good. Very good. Today's interview will continue after this brief message brought to you by One Pitch. 
Are you curious to learn about the unique ways One Pitch helps brands engage with the right journalists? Head to onepitch.co and create your own custom media list in five minutes or less. Now back to today's episode. Okay, back to the inbox and you sorting through the pitches. On the opposite side of that, is there something where you're like, oh God, that's just a bad pitch? No go. A bad pitch, yeah. Or let's say a non interested pitch. Yeah. You're just like, mm, that's a no. Clearly someone spells your name wrong. Okay, that's a no. Like <laughs> clearly someone's trying to tell you shampoo, launch, party, like that's a no. But is there something where you're like, nah, that, ju- ah, that just doesn't do it? Yeah, I think sometimes we we get pitches that just are not relevant to our audience. You know, maybe some people think that we're we're consumer focused and we're really not. Mm. You know, I might I might write about retail banking and and what a bank might a new product they're launching, but that's really from the angle of what are what are other you know, executives or CEOs at banks going to want to know about this. So if you pitch me something that's very consumer oriented about, I don't know, X percentage of millennials now do this, or, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just, I got to see the banking (laughs) angle. (laughs) Got to see that banking. I got to look at it in a lens from a fellow banking or FinTech executive. What's, what's their takeaway? Why do they want to know about this? Mm-hmm. So would back to kind of like the good pitch. I heard this yesterday on the show and I was like, Ooh, this is, this is, this might be relevant to you. I want to see if this works. Do you want to see, for example, experts who can be on record or they have the big title, something like that. Like if you had, Oh, Wells Fargo CEO on record wants to talk to you about Senate bill X, that would be an open for you. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if your client is Wells Fargo and Charlie Scharf wants to talk to me, I will, I will uh, drop yeah. everything and hop on phone <laughs> and talk to Charlie Scharf. This is, <laughs> by the way, this is what I love. I think so many publicists are just like, Oh, the media never wants to talk to anybody. It's like, Oh no, no, no. It's just the person it is. So yeah. if you have the caliber of the person, Hey, exactly. And in some cases, maybe the pitch itself is not necessarily something I'm that interested in. But if you tell me I can talk to your CEO about it and and why that your company is is going in this direction, especially if it's a big bank or a well-known fintech, then yes, I'm going to hop on that call because that in and of itself is I think interesting to our readers. They they want to know what the big executives are doing and why they're doing it. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is good to know. Anna, is there anything else tips, tricks you use just to manage the flow of the pitches that come your way or that we should just know? So yeah, there's the the flagging that I do. But you know, other than that, I, I'll try to just like open another window, maybe perhaps in my computer and then like (laughs) go back to it. But obviously that that can get kind of chaotic if you've got like a ton of Outlook windows open. No, I'm I'm still trying to figure it out. To be honest, I'm open to tips from other journalists on how they manage their inboxes. (laughs) I'm still, you know, that's almost maybe a fun thing we could do one pitch could do of like, okay, everyone who's been on the show has talked about this thing do you want it do you want to all come and hang out and like share your tips i think it'd be fascinating i could tell you doing all the interviews it would be fascinating yeah so maybe that's something we could look into anyway Ooh, anna i have a quick hit list of questions here to rapid fire throw your way and i would love to hear your thoughts sure are you ready okay video or phone interview phone interview i yeah i i just I don't want to be camera ready all the time. <laughs> I just also hey, don't I necessarily feel need to see your face to hear what you're, what information you're giving me. So yeah, uh-huh. phone is the way uh-huh. to go. <laughs> Bullet points or paragraphs? Bullet points. Short or long pitches? I know this is a dumb one, but still, you'd be surprised. Short. I mean, and short, short is like... And maybe, how short? Like two to three paragraphs, maybe, you know? And oh, yeah. That's, I think, long. Okay. I, I'm thinking pairs. short paragraphs, yeah, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three sentences. That's it. Okay. Images attached or Dropbox zip file? Uh, no preference. Email or formerly known Twitter? We'll call it XDM. So email is probably the, the very best way to, to reach me. I, I used to be way more active on Twitter or, excuse me, X, but not so much anymore. I'm, I'm trying to be more active on LinkedIn. So yes, trying LinkedIn's to like, up. yeah, trying to get more pitches there. Really so if you want to pitch me on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. I got you. I got you. Okay. Direct or creative subject lines? 
direct. I, I, I just think it's a lot easier for me to figure out what, what the pitch is. Creative mm-hmm. can sometimes be a little, I don't know, a little, a little misleading perhaps. I don't know. It's, yep. it's, it's just not, and it's not really our focus here at, at Banking Dive. You know, yeah, that's kind of not the vibe. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Press release or media kit. Media kit's fine. I mean, a, a press release is great, I guess, to start out with. But if you've got a media kit with photos and, and other stuff, I'm always happy to look at it. Mm-hmm. What time do you normally read pitches? We covered this a little bit. Yeah. So, I I mean, I could be on my – the way things are these days, I could be on my mm-hmm. phone at any mm-hmm. time of the day looking through my inbox, trying to be better about that, separating, like, you know, off time and, and work time. But mm-hmm. I'd say the best time when I'm really focused looking at my inbox is like late afternoon. That's like when mm. the busyness of my day is over. We've got our, our newsletter has gone out. Uh, most likely I'm done with meetings and interviews that I had. So I'm kind of just checking on what am I doing for the rest of the day or the rest of the week. So that I would say maybe between like three and five might be the best window to, to get my attention. Hmm. Huh. That's an unusual time. Glad we asked. Okay. <laughs> and then what types of sources do you look for? If you had to say the title, the one thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I kind of hinted at this before. I am yes, looking, you did, yes. yeah, looking at like that C-suite executive. I mean, I wanted, I want to talk to the people that are the decision makers at, at companies. They tend to, to make the headlines, if you will, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and they're the ones that our, our readers are interested in as well. But that being said, I mean, I, I do still want to talk to the folks, you know, the managers, folks that are creating products in the day to day of things at a bank or fintech. I mean, that's, that's also obviously always valuable. So yeah, it, it really, it could be wide ranging depending on the, the angle of the story, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is there anything else, Anna, that you'd like to promote, emphasize, celebrate? We just want to highlight you. Well, you know, if you check out, check out Banking Dive, you know, if you've got yes. clients that are in the banking and fintech sector, check us out, look at what we're writing about. And, and maybe you've got someone that's a good fit for us. I'm always on the hunt for stories about banks or fintechs that are servicing a specific demographic, you know, maybe it might be in an underserved demographic or a segment of the population that's just got some really unique banking needs. A couple of years ago, I wrote a story about how some community banks in Lancaster, Pennsylvania are serving in the Amish community. It was a fun story. Hmm. I, you know, I, I got to learn. Yeah, I, it was a little out of my comfort zone, you know, covering something that I, I, I'm, I'm an area I'm not normally in. But, you know, these banks had some really interesting solutions to serving a group that's not as connected technology wise or using mobile banking in the same way that most of us are. So it was it was a really fun story. So I'm 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 always looking for just that unique, unique angle. And yeah, what's your firm doing that's that's different and and you know what's the demographic they're reaching that maybe isn't getting the the service from traditional banks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anna Rushka, thank you for being on our little show today. This was fun. Thanks so much for having me. Yes, of course. And if we got anything good banking wise, especially as CEO of a big bank, we know where to go to. Yeah. That's you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much, Anna. Pleasure having you. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's Coffee with the Journalist episode featuring Anna Rushka from Banking Dive. For more exclusive insights about the journalists on this podcast, subscribe to our weekly podcast newsletter at onepitch.co forward slash podcast. We'll see you next week with even more insights about the journalists you want to learn more about. Until then, start great stories. Great stories.